everyone, welcome to Volleyball DNA, where we examine the characteristics that make up some of the most intriguing personalities in the world of volleyball. I'm Denise Lazaro. And I'm Anton Rojas. The subject for this episode is one of the finest playmakers in the history of UAP Volleyball. She was a three-time best setter, former team captain of the Ateneo Lady Eagles, and a member of the famed Fab Five. Let's welcome Jem Ferrer. Good morning. Hi, sir. Hello. Buti Wait, nagising ka ng maaga. Bakit? <laughs> Kasi okay. late ka natutulog eh. <laughs> Oo, oh, akala ko hindi ka na magigising dahil nag-ano nag, ka pa eh, nag-ML ka pa eh. Yeah. <laughs> Nagpa-practice ka na ba for SEA Games? Di ba may E-Games oh, oh, oh. sa SEA Games? Kasama so, ka na doon. Sasali ako doon. Oh, team. <laughs> Ganyan, sila Ella laging tumatawag pag nakita nilang naglalaro ako. Nag-ML rin si Ella? Before. Tapos kasi every time na tinatawagan ako, binababa ko talaga yung tawag. Kasi naglalag yung game. So, pag alam niyang binaba ko, sabi niya, naglalaro ka, no? Sabi ko, oo, oh, oh, tawag ka ng tawag. Sabi niya, sabi ko na nga ba, kaya talaga natin tinatawagan niyo. Guys, sobrang imba si Jem. Jem, ano ulit rank mo? Ngayon? Mm. Ngitik na. <laughs> Yun yung pinakamataas, di ba? Um, ah, wait. Glory. Ne- next to, ano mas mataas? Legend o Mythic? Mythic. And then Mythical Glory. You're on the way. Malang You're on the way. K- konti na lang. <laughs> matagal pa yun, matagal pa. <laughs> Like, ilang points pa. Pero grabe. nag excel na nga sa volleyball. nag excel pa sa ML. Pag national team na kasi ako gusto sumalis sa SEA Games. So, <laughs> so lang. How are you guys? How are you? Ikaw, how are you? I mean, it's always, gl- it's always a good time, you know, to have players like you, prominent players, especially, um, the likes of you na prominent during the rise of the popularity of Philippine volleyball. And your legacy will forever be connected to the famed Ateneo Fab Five. Pero how is Jem Ferrer? How, is, how are you nowadays? Um, Jem is still Jem, I think. Uh, focus in learning, growing as I get older. Kasi, you know naman ngayong pandemic, medyo ang daming challenges. So, tuloy lang yung buhay and I need to be strong talaga to be able to survive. And, I mean, pagdating nga ng PVL bubble, sobrang parang nakapanibago kasi feeling ko ang daming adjustment na nangyari. Tapos, of course, nung before pag-graduate ko, pagpasok ko ng, ng mga commercial leagues, ako yung bata. Ngayon, ako na yung pinakamatanda na atin ng karamihan. So, siguro for me, ano ngayon, um, embrace lang ng new role and, and nga, move on lang, move forward and grow lang talaga. Jem, naalala ko, we did a feature on you and Ella, actually. It's funny that you mentioned Ella earlier. Because um, we did a feature on you, mga working girls kayo. Naalala mo yun, nagluto pa kayo ng waffles tsaka pancakes. Naalala mo yung feature na yun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, before, ano kasi, talagang after nung, ano, nung pag-graduate ko na Ateneo, diretso ako ng corporate work. Kasi before, hindi naman ganun kalaki yung volleyball dito sa Philippines. Wala namang mga professional leagues and ilan lang commercial league. Kumbaga, um, invitational lang. Kasi karamihan ng mga teams before, sobrang pili lang yung mga pinipili nilang graduate na player. So, sobrang laking bagay din ng corporate work sa amin na marami kami natutunan. So, right, right now, Jem, you're still in the corporate world. Kasi dati, naalala ko, nakuwento mo, talagang... 9 to 5 job and then after that pupunta pa kayo sa practice tas you have to go through traffic pa and all that so talagang working athlete so is is that still the life you're living right now um no na nagquit na ako ng corporate work ko like last 2015 i think and then nagfocus na lang sa sports uh, to help the Perlas team and Charo sa mga plans niya with sports yon okay okay but there was also a time that you were helping out with BBR, right? Yeah, yeah. I helped BBR and then I helped also Charo and the BBR people sa FIDB because they had um international event here. 
happened. I think may contract sila before with FIV for three years. So I helped them to organize everything. And sobrang nakapagod kasi syempre first time para sa beach volleyball na maghawak ng ganong kalaking event. And alam mo yun, hindi lang isang court eh. Unlike sa indoor, alam mo, eto lang yung court mo. Nung nag kami ng FIVB, apat na court yung hinahawakan mo. So, like, talagang kailangan yung mga tao pa kada court and all. Wow, you juggle so much, Jem. <laughs> before lang yun, before lang. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's talk about naman how you got into the sport. Uh, kasi nung high school, you were playing for Hope Christian High School under kay Coach Jerry. Ano ka naman yung na-discover? How did you end up playing for Hope? Um, no, grade 4 kasi ako. No? Maraming mga high school students na umiikot sa mga classrooms. Like, they were inviting kids to join their clubs, mga ganon. Tapos, ako kasi since mahilig ako maglaro, um, parang gusto ko siyang matry. And I didn't know na I joined a varsity team pala. Parang akala ko lang after school, parang okay, lalaro lang, volleyball lang. Hindi ko alam na ganun pala kalaki yung volleyball nung time na yon dun sa school namin. And yun nga, I think you're familiar with Manila Santos. Siya yung senior nung time na yun and siya yung um, captain ball. So inabutan ko siya. And wow. to be honest, talagang sobrang laking bagay na... Sumali ako dun sa Hope Christian High School na volleyball team kasi uh, actually sabi nga ni Coach Jerry nung time na yon sana makabuo ka ng elementary team nyo at least uh, seven people kasi he was planning to join sa mga tournaments and then tignan, nung papalapit na yung biga, alam mo yun, nagulat na lang ako, karamihan ng mga kasabay kong mga players nagquit So parang medyo nag, nag, nagdalawang isip talaga ako if sasali pa ako ng volleyball, eh, kung itutuloy ko. Kasi wala na akong teammate eh. So sabi ko, anong sasalian kung naming liga? Ako na lang yung naiwan. So sabi ni Coach Jerry, sige, sige, ano na lang. Um, ilaline up na lang kita sa high school. Kasi nung time naman na yon before, uh, hindi uso yung pag elementary ka, elementary team ka lang dapat. You can join the high school line up naman talaga. Kasi hindi naman ganun ka-strict yung volleyball before. So ako lang yung bata dun sa line up ng high school. And sobrang thankful lang ako kasi Sobrang tinutukan ako ni Coach Jerry. As in, parang actually, mas takot pa nga ako sa kanya kaysa sa dad ko eh. Sobrang takot talaga lahat kami. Takot na takot kay Coach Jerry. So siguro ano, doon nag-start yung career ko talaga sa sports. And I guess that's also the reason why Jem is one of the most intelligent players in volleyball because she's ahead of she was ahead of her time after... Hearing that story, Jem, ganun ka pala. You were playing up, meaning that you were young, but you were playing with players, students who were much older than you. Yeah, yeah. So, dun talaga ako natutong mag-adjust and makisama sa mga tao-tao. And parang, alam mo kahit ako yung bunso sa team, hindi ako nagpatrato na bata talaga. Parang, I think, kailangan kong makisabay and matuto kasi ibang level yung nilalaroan nila eh. Uh, if yung mindset mo na Pag nasa loob ka ng court, bata ako, so sorry kung marami akong errors. Parang hindi pwedeng ganon for me. Siguro doon ako talaga natuto and nag-grow as a player. So now we're getting an idea of how yung personality ni Jem as a player was formed. So that, that's, uh, that's, that's nice to, um, it's nice that you shared that, Jem. Alam mo, when, when Den and I started the show, you, yung research namin started getting deeper. We started looking at yung talagang the beginnings of the players and then when you search online nakakatuwa when you look at like yung mga high school pictures nyo yung mga players and the teams that you were a part of during your development as, as a player and then nakita ko yung picture mo sa Hope and I saw so many familiar faces like you know, Melissa was there Melissa Goheng um, the Cheng sisters naging teammate yeah. mo pala si, si Des tsaka si, si Janelle. Janelle so, so ang dami no for for you during those days like elementary and high school sino ba yung mga malalakas na players na yung sinabi mo sa sarili mo nung nakita mo sila maglaro oh this player is gonna be big in the future magiyu up to who who were who were the players that really stood out during your time in in high school um, during our time sobrang dami talagang players na malalakas actually sa ibang schools nandiyan yung USD high school before um 
nandun pa si Alisa Valdez, Dindin Santiago, Rhea Di Makulangan, Kim Parto. So they were telling nga na, what if kung nagsama-sama pa itong mga to pagdating sa college? So talagang magiging iba yung impact ng UST Women's Volleyball. And ayun nga, nandyan din sila Mika Reyes, of course, sila... Ayan, si Denden from CSA, marami achievements yan si Denden, palarong pang bansa and everything. Um, Jovelin Gonzaga from City also. Kasi siguro ganun kalaki yung sports before, kahit na hindi, walang social media or anything nung high school. Pero sobrang daming tournaments. Um, not only here in Manila, but outside Metro Manila also. So marami talaga kaming mga nakakalaban na sobrang nagdodominant pagdating sa sports during nung time namin. But also, ano kasi... Uh, hindi uso yung mga, you know, uh, live streams. So, hindi talaga nakita ng mga fans kung ano yung mga klase ng players, yung mga quality players na nasa mga iba't ibang lugar. But I'm happy na yung mga nakita kong nag-dominant talaga before, eh, nakakalaro at nakakalaban na namin up until now. Wait, Jem. So, si Jov na from Gimaras na nakalaban mo during that level? Yeah, kasi before may mga tournament of champions, kumbaga, let's say, um, Shakey's V-League high, uh, high School Division here in Manila. And then, meron din outside Manila. So, lahat na nag-champion per region, uh, naglalaban-laban sila. And then, there's this palarong pambansa also. So, dun talaga nakikita-kita karamihan ng players na napupunta sa college sa palarong pambansa. Jen mentioned earlier na yun nga, UST High School was one of the like, best teams nung time na yun. Pero yung hope talaga yung pinakakatakutan ng lahat. Hindi naman. Hindi, totoo to. Alam mo yung Hindi. UST, like Alisa's there, Kim Harder's there, sila din din ang tatangkat, di ba? Pero sila hirap na hirap rin sila sa hope. Si Alisa na rin nagsabi niyan. So what's so special about the hope team? Kasi you guys, I played with you guys, against you guys. And you played so simple lang. Like mga drop-drop ball lang. Maganda yung depensa. Ano bang klaseng training yung pinagdaanan nyo under Coach Jerry? Siguro with Coach Jerry kasi ano siya eh, um, for him, tinatry naman niyang magkaroon ng power yung mga players. And since parang ang tagal nga mag-develop ng power pagdating sa mga bata, parang ang gusto na lang niya na, na matutunan namin, yung maging matalino ka inside the court. As in, sasabihin naman niya sa'yo, ganun din naman, talakasan mo na sobra, one point pa rin naman. So why not, mag-isip ka na lang kung saan mo ilalagay, may butas, ba't mo papapahirapan yung sarili mo makakuha ng puntos kung may madali namang way to get a point. So siguro, yun yung nabaon ko pagdating ng college. Top of mind, who, 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 were the, who were the best players from, from Hope? best players na produced by Hope. I mean, I guess it's a given na na Ate Ila Santos is one of them, right? Yeah, um, Des Cheng, Mel Gohing, um, Janelle Cheng, and then, uh, I don't know if you know Bernie Scott from UST. Yes. Yeah, yung mga yun. And sobrang thankful talaga kami kay Coach Jerry kasi sa sobrang hirap ng training ng high school, medyo kinaya pagdating ng college. I remember me nagsabi, I forgot who said it. I think it was Ate Ila. Yung, yung takbo nyo daw, yun yung pinakamahirap. Kasi ang tagal yung tumatakbo. Oo, sobrang tagal namin tumatakbo. Especially if natatalo kami sa game. Papapun, papabalikin kami ni Coach Jerry sa Hope. And then magtitraining ulit kami. And then minsan tumatakbo kami ng matagal sa Hope, sa gym. Tapos si Coach Jerry, aalis ng gym. So hanggat hindi siya bumabalik, hindi kami titigil. And funny thing was, um, si Coach Jerry, pagbalik niya, bigla nakaligo na, fresh na ulit, and all, umuwi pala siya. So talaga, ang tagal namin naghihintay dun sa gym. Kasi pagka tumigil kami, may magsusumbong, o kaya may kita niya kami. So talagang tuloy-tuloy kami, sobrang naghihintay talaga kami kay Coach Jerry lagi. Wow. But, Jem, we talked about how there were a lot of star players nung, nung time mo in high school. But how were you recruited by Ateneo? And why Ateneo? Because for sure, a lot of uh, schools tried to get you. Um, I was recruited by Coach Ron Bulay. He was uh, the head coach kasi of one of the Chinese schools that we were namin. And during that time, he was the head coach of Ateneo women's team also. So he really worked on to get me 
ko Ateneo. And actually, first choice ko talaga yung Ateneo. I don't know. Parang, alam mo yun, mafe-feel mo eh. Pagka nag-train ka once with people, parang mafe-feel mo na, uy, feeling ko at home na ako. Tapos, uh, ni Z, Phil, and Mel Bohin, we talked about it. Na magsasama-sama talaga kaming apat sa isang school. But eventually nga, si Mel napunta ng Dasal. Pero naging okay naman lahat. And I think kung hindi kami nag-Ateneo, mapupunta rin kami ng Lasal. Oh my, imagine that. Ang <laughs> lakas ng Lasal. <laughs> I remember kinwento ni Ate Ila na how, how she ended up in Lasal. Eh. Na, na, nakakagulat na nung una, hindi pa siya pinapansin ni Coach Ramil. Tapos muntik pa siya magletran. But you know, it, it's a good story also. But I want to ask Jem... What was your first encounter with Coach Roger Goraev? Um, to be honest, nakatakot si Coach Roger eh. Nung una, parang nung nalaman ko na, kasi syempre I was recruited by Coach Rod Dulay. And then, hmm. biglang nagkaroon ng changes, naging si Coach Roger Goraev. So parang sabi ko, hala, siya yung napapanood ko sa TV. <laughs> eh di ba before, parang, alam yun, pag time out, parang nagagalit eh. Though sanay naman ako with Coach Jerry na nagagalit lagi. Pero parang feeling ko ang laking uh, adjustment for me kasi si Coach Jerry, bang klaseng coach siya, kung galit siya during game, hindi siya magsasalita. And then si Coach Roger naman, kung galit siya, talagang magsasalita yan ng lahat. So parang sabi ko, naku, magkaibang magkaiba. But sobrang ano, naging okay naman lahat and talagang in-embrace namin yung personality ni Coach kasi talagang nag-grow kami lahat. Ah, uh, so Jem, it wasn't Coach Roger pala who, who got you from Hope. Na, yeah, si Coach Ron. Nagkita na kayo when the coaching change happened and he was in Ateneo. Yeah, si Coach Ronald Dulay talaga yung head coach before. Okay. And when Coach Roger arrived sa Ateneo, he had to cut the line up. And yung natira 10 players na lang. How hard was that? I mean, 10 players? Just 10 players in the lineup? And ang hirap yeah. sa training. Parang lima kaming rookies and then lima yung iniwan niyang seniors. Tapos siguro ano eh, with Coach Roger, parang sanay naman siya na ganun lang yung mga players niya. Kasi before naman, hindi naman uso yung may Team A ka, may Team B ka sa isang team. So limited lang talaga yung mga players mo. And I think gumana naman with Coach Roger, yun na lang nakapressure. Kasi bawal ka talagang mapilay or anything. Kasi... Ilan lang kayo eh na nasa team. So, wala kang kapalitan. And nung time na yun, um, April Pahe, siya lang yung kapalitan ko sa setting. And then, siya rin yung kapalitan ng ibang spikers. <laughs> so, talagang ang laki ng role ng isang player na yun. Grabe. Jem, ito ah. So, we, ha- we had Coach Roger Goreab on the show a while back. Tapos, nakakatawa yung mga kwento niya eh. Uh, there is this one particular story that he told. I don't even know how we ended up talking about this. But may isang time daw. Na, so, this is when gusto, na, gusto nyo na mag-champion daw. As in, the team was already um, ganda na yung foundation. You guys were getting better. Umaabot na kayo sa Final Four every year. So, naging mas stricto daw siya. So, he, he got all your phones daw. He confiscated all of your phones. And then, in the middle of the night, biglang nag-alarm lahat. Nag-alarm lahat yung phones. So, nagising sila. Si, si Coach Parley. Ta- ano, ano yan? Ano yan? Ano, ano, ano. So, sabi, sabi, ay, tinanong ko, si Coach, sino may pakananon? Tapos sabi niya, hindi ako sure, pero tingin ko si Jem Ferrer. Tingin ko si Jem Ferrer. <laughs> so, what, what, what is the real story on that, Jem? <laughs> Actually, I'm not sure ko ako may pakanan. And then ako ba? Kasi I just remember na I'm the one collecting phones. Like, bago mag 10pm ata. Tapos, hindi ko sure. And then the next day, sabi nga niya, mga loko-loko kayo, hindi ako nakatulog. Sabi na, bakit coach? Iba-iba daw yung alarm sa phone. Actually, hindi namin sinasadya eh. Or I'm not sure. Kung ako man, sige, I'll take full responsibility. <laughs> Pero sobra nakakatawa yung time na yun. Imagine ang aga ng training tas puyat si coach. Siya yung puyat. <laughs> <laughs> Pero you know, coach was very cool about it eh. Parang sabi niya, uh, hindi na ako nagagalit. Ano lang, hoy, sino nang alarm? Parang sabi niya, he enjoyed it kasi parang parang bumabalik daw siya sa pagiging bata ulit. 
because of because of you guys because of the pranks that you guys did <laughs> yeah sobrang bait ni coach Roger outside uh court naman and talagang parang tatay namin siya yun nga lang pagdating talaga sa court sobrang kalangan seryoso sa lahat trabaho kung trabaho Yeah, he changes personality really quickly. Like, <laughs> di ba, nandun lang yung quarters namin sa baba ng Blue Eagle. So, pagkaakit namin ng court, iba na yung ugali niya. As in, all business na. Pero pagbalik namin dun sa quarters, kung nga, kakain na kami ng sabay-sabay. Ayun, makulit na ulit siya. Very, very caring, very fatherly. Nangungulit lagi, madaldal. Yeah, yun si Coach Roger. <laughs> But yes, hindi ko na matandaan kung sino yung may pakananan. I think it was a collective ano naman, like idea na para pagtripan sila. Yeah, ako. even even Phil, <laughs> even Phil doesn't remember it na. <laughs> oh. No, oh, babait talaga kami. Hindi mm-hmm. sig- lang namin sinasadya na may naka-set pa lang alarm. <laughs> may kasi maaga yung training natin noon, madaling araw, kailangan gising na. Yeah, para magising sila coach tapos gigisingin kami. <laughs> kasi wala kaming mga phone, ganon. Para paraan lang. <laughs> Okay, so fi- finally, that mystery is is solved. Jem is gonna take responsibility, being that Jem, Jem was one of the leaders of the of the team. So anyway, Jem, this is also another surprising thing about you. With all due respect, even as a sophomore, okay, you were just a sophomore, and you won best setter. Was this something that you expected? Na kasi di ba? It's it's rare na. You know, somebody wins an award at a young age, like second year mo palang sa UAAP best setter na agad. Did you did you expect that to happen? Um, honestly, I didn't expect that to happen. Because nga, and daming players better than me. And then, yun nga, since sabi ng karamihan, uh, there there were taller players also during my time. And then, bata pa ako, so nagsisimula pa lang talaga ako matuto ng mas mataas na quality ng volleyball. Kasi ayano naman hindi uubra yung nilalaro ko no high school pagdating sa college. And talagang sobrang laki ng adjustment. Kasi nung high school ako, hindi naman ako nagbablock. Wala kami masyado mga plays. Like, simple sets lang. Open, tres, cinco, ganun lang kami before. So, pagdating nung college, talagang lahat ng mga combination plays, ng mga running, ng mga beat weeks. Si Coach Roger na talaga nagturo sa akin. And siguro nung time na hindi ko na iniisip yung individual award kasi our main goal was makaabot ng final four. Since yun naman yung talagang goal muna ng Ateneo kasi medyo matagal-tagal ng nawala ang Ateneo yung time na yun sa volleyball. And it's not easy to be the setter, the main setter of the team. Lalo na wala kang kapalitan na legitimate setter. Si Abe Fahe pa pala yung kapalitan mo as a setter. Uh, it takes a certain amount of maturity, a level of maturity to be able to, you know, orchestrate yung offense ng isang team. And you did it so well. Kasi imagine second year mo pa lang, nag-best setter ka na, tapos first time in a long time na nag-final four yung Ateneo with like what, five rookies in the team, in the lineup? First six pa nga ata, di ba? And in your UAAP career, tatlong beses kang nag-best setter. And I think only two of you were able to achieve that feat. That's you and Kim Fajardo. And I think hindi na kayo nag-abot ni Kim sa UAAP in college, no? Um, I can't remember. Parang hindi na nga sa college. I think Or hindi one year. Kasi, kasi 76 ata nag-rookie si Kim. Oh. That, that's what I remember. Ako si Eliza. Yes, kasi Tawa. I think si Kim nag nag-set out pa ng isang taon. That's what I remember. But anyway, yes, kayong dalawa lang yung naka three times na best setter sa UAAP. Pero ikaw nung time mo, sino ba yung rival setter mo? Um, rival I, setter. I don't know kung sino yung rival setter ko kasi for me, I think I have my own discarte when it comes to setting and Talagang, alam mo yun din, inaaral naman nat- natin yung mga players individually, pero hindi kasi natin nilalagay sa utak natin or hindi natin mindset yung, uy, rival ko to, si ganito, si ganyan. Kasi 
I'm more focused on our side para makadiskarte ng maayos para sa team. Kasi if you're gonna think about it na kalaban ko yung rival ko, parang mas, ikaw yung masisira eh. Masisira yung laro mo. So, parang ang tendency nun ang mangyayari, uh, isipin mo kung anong ginagawa niya, medyo gagayahin mo rin. Kasi it's, ano eh, nasa utak mo na rival mo siya eh. Kailangan, kung anong nagagawa niya, kaya ko rin. So, talaga ipoprove mo na better ako kaysa sa kanya. So, hindi naging ganun yung mindset ko. So, I don't think uh, may rival ako before. Or kung meron man, siguro sila din gumagawa ng <laughs> rivalry. <laughs> <laughs> si Phil, sinabi niya yung rival niya was was Chuck Cruz eh. Kasi parehong team captain and then they were playing against each other for such a long time. Sa Lasal, sino yung mga nakatapat mo na setters? Si Esperanza ba yung isa? Mika yeah, Esperanza. si Mika Esperanza. And then, may time na inabutan ko also si Kay Martinez, I think, for one year. But yeah, si Mika yung setter nung nasal during my time. The, the fans will surely answer the question kung naabutan mo si Kim. Because I remember there was a time na Kim was playing behind Mika pa eh. When, when Kim mm. first came in eh. Okay. Ito, uh, uh, syempre... Um, you mentioned earlier, Jem, na marami kang nakalaban na magagaling na setters. A lot of these setters were taller than you. And I just want to go back to, to uh, season 74. Alam mo ba, you could, you, could have, you could have became a four-time UAP best setter. <laughs> Alaga, sayang. Hindi, joke lang. <laughs> joke lang, joke lang. His, history yun, ah. I mean, if, if you became a four-time best setter, grabe yun. Okay, kasi I was looking back Saan ba hindi nag-best setter si Jem? Kasi season 72, best setter season 73, and then season 75. What happened in season 74? So I wanted to check the stats to see how close the race to best setter was. So this is what I saw. And nag-best setter that time was FU's Giselle C. Mm-hmm. So yung average per set niya was 10.59. Yung sayo was 10.19. So gan- ganun ka dikit yung, yung race. Tapos yung pangatlo pa, was Rhea Demokolangan, who up to now is still playing on a national level, international level. So, uh, grabe. W- what are your thoughts on this na ganun pala kadikit yung, yung race in season 74 and like mabibigat din yung mga nakalaban mo like Giselle C just, just won a championship in the PVL? Um, for me kasi na, Anton, uh, yung pagiging best setter, bonus siya eh individual award and talagang focused kami nung time namin with Coach Roger na kailangan talaga namin makapag final four man lang. I mean finals na actually kasi season 74 yun yung first finals uh, appearance namin. So kailangan namin masungkit kahit isa. But uh, yeah, if you're gonna base it on stats, diktikan talaga yung labanan nung time na yun kasi season 74 yun na yung rise of, vol- of Philippine volleyball eh. Doon na nag-start maglaro yung mga players sa Smart Araneta, Mall of Asia. So, dun talaga lumaki yung volleyball ng biglaan. Actually, nagulat kami na, wow, dati, nung, nanon, nung naglalaro kami dito sa San Juan Arena, iilan lang yung mga tao, and then kami pa yung nagbibigay ng ticket sa mga tao, kami pa yung naghahanap ng mga supporters namin, parents lang namin nagsusupport sa amin, and then pagdating nung padulo na, nung batch namin, parang biglang, hindi na namin expect na ganito nakakarami yung mga nanonood. Like, yung iba hindi na nakapasok talaga ng San Juan Arena. And then, may mga ibang players, uh, I mean, ibang fans also na hindi na rin nakapasok ng Smart Araneta, ng MOA, kasi wala ng ticket. So, sobrang-sobrang grabe yung season namin, yung last two seasons namin sa UAAP na sobrang iba talaga yung nilaki ng Philippine Volleyball. Jem, just a follow-up. If you don't have a rival setter, kasi siyempre, your focus was just on, it, on the team as you explained, sino yung setter na nag-push sa'yo na parang pag alam mong kalaban mo tong team na to and this team has this setter, parang may extra motivation ka to perform well or, or nacha-challenge ka? Siguro, um, sa akin si Rhea, di makulangan. Kasi nung time, actually nung elementary pa kami, nakita ko na si Rhea na naglalaro um, with Lasalipa. And then sabi ni Coach Jerry sa akin, 
tandaan mo yung apelido na yan. Kasi nga, ganun kagaling si Rhea. Bata pa lang, elementary pa lang. And then matangkad siya. So parang sabi ni Coach Jerry, tandaan mo yung pangalan niya yan. Dahil sure ako makakapag-deliyan ng college. And then, yun nga, nangyari nga. And then, naging teammate ko pa si Rhea for NCR. Nag-represent kami ng NCR para sa palarong pambansa. Talagang beshi naman kami ni Rhea, but hindi, na, hindi kami talaga rivals. And I think sobrang, ano yun, iba yung feeling pag nakalaban mo yung isang Rhea de Makulangan. Kasi sobrang, pamilya kasi sila ng setter eh. Like yung mga kapatid niya na dalawang lalaki, setter also. So, ganun kataas yung volleyball IT ni Rhea pagdating sa setting. Alam, alam niyo, recently ko lang na-realize na Rhea is really tall. Yeah. I saw a recent yeah. I saw a recent pick of the national team. Tapos si Rhea parang uh, in, in, like parang ano na siya, she's like one of the spikers na rin. <laughs> And that's rare to have like a tall setter. Yeah, ilan na lang yung mga ganung setters. And we're really happy. I'm really happy that she's back in the national team also. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jen, let's go back naman sa UA80 kasi you're right, no? Parang season 74 was really the start of the rise in popularity of Philippine volleyball. And I think it was also because that was the first time na nag-finals ang Ateneo and La Salle. We, like, we brought the rivalry from basketball na Ateneo and La Salle to volleyball. And added na rin yung TV coverage ng ABS. So, how was the feeling though that we had that rivalry with Lasal sa volleyball naman? Siguro, sobrang nakapanibago din. Kasi, you know, sa basketball lang natin nakikita na may mga supporters ka na mga sobrang laki na pumasok sa volleyball. Kasi, if you're gonna compare it, sa basketball kasi, most of the audience, yung mga alumni, mga titos, mga titas sa basketball. And then sa so volleyball, yung mga fans naman ng Ateneo Lasal sa volleyball ay eh yung mga, talagang alam mo yun, from other schools, mga kids, mga aspiring kids. So, yun yung sobrang nakapanibago nung tumaas na yung volleyball. I mean, nung doon nung nag-start na yung rise ng volleyball. Kasi may kita mo na rin na may mga alumni supporters also from basketball na natunood na rin ng volleyball. So, ibig sabihin, parang, kahit pa pa nakakatuwa, nakakataba ng puso kasi may mga, para kang nag-recruit <laughs> ng mga fans mo papuntang volleyball also. So, it's like all walks of life, like the fans of volleyball. In each yeah. school, it's not just like alumni or the students of a certain school. It's just different people. Matatanda, bata, girls, boys. It's just everyone really admires volleyball. And season 74 to season 75, that was a huge transition. Like, it was, a, it was a pivotal moment in Philippine volleyball history because season 74, sa Phil Oil pa ginaganap yung finals eh. But season 75, that's when hindi na kinaya ng Phil Oil yung tao. All, all, all the people who were coming in to watch you guys, doon na lumipat sa MOA at sa Smart Araneta. Now, there was, uh, Gem and I were, were talking about this like before we, we set up this, this um, interview of ours. Um, kasi di ba, may, may isang memorable moment in the finals. Um, hopefully, you guys watching can, can help us out with this and send us the link because we were really trying to look for a video of this. <laughs> So there is this one time in the finals, Gem season 75 ata no, season 75 like if our if our memory serves us right. Okay, anyway, the fans will help us out. Um there is one time na nagka violation kayo because mo- seven players were on the court. <laughs> so ano nangyari doon? What, what what's the what is the story behind, behind this? Um, that time kasi, actually, hindi namin napansin na seven players na pala yung nasa court. Kasi, Coach Roger was facing the Lasal court noong time na yun. And then, he didn't notice na Eliza was standing behind him, nandoon sa sulok literal, sa corner ng end line. So, parang, ako kasi, siguro, isa na rin ako sa may kasalanan na 
ako kasi chine-check ko yung position ng mga receivers ko eh. And talagang literal na nakatago si Eliza. Parang hindi ko talaga hindi ko talaga siya nakita na nasa sulok. So sabi ko, parang ah wait lang bakit parang pum- biglang pumito, pito daw kami. And sobra sabi ko nga, bakit gadot parang nawala si Eliza doon biglang Bigla lang ano, biglang pito na kami. So sabi ko, kala ko lumabas. Sino ba yung dapat mong papalitan ng time na yun, Ben? Sino yung papalitan? Kasi diba, siya. Siya kasi, gitna siya nun. So it was kind oh, of yeah. my fault rin. Pero naalala ko kasi, nag-appear kami. Kasi usually naman, ba diba, parang mag-aano kayo, mag-appear kayo when you go when you change with the middle and, the, and with the libero. Pero naalala ko talaga, nagtagpo kami. So I thought she went out. Tapos pumito parang, ano man anin kasi yun pala nandun nga si Alicia sa pinakalikod nagtatago uh, she thought opener siya nun time na yun but I think yeah. also uh, parang mali din ng second referee kasi mm-hmm. syempre second referee's job to check kung dun sa palitan ng libero and yung papalitan niya and medyo hindi ako agree na pinigay agad yung point sa Lasal well I'm not really sure 100% sure about the tool pero the second referee should have checked it yung palitan nga ng libero tsaka ng papalitan. Pero, grabe, one for the books talaga yon din. Sobra epic. Yeah. And, and epic was fail. So, <laughs> epic fail. And it was a crucial moment, right? Dikit yung laro. Yeah, sobrang mm. la- lamang ata kami noon nung time na yon So, nung nangyari yun, parang medyo, uh, parang panira momentum. <laughs> Sobra sayang. Pero ano ah, my, my takeaway from this now that you guys are talking about it is, You guys both took responsibility for it. And uh, I, yeah, I, I, kasi, I, I respect you guys for that. Kasi ako kasi talagang ako sinicheck ko yung positioning sa receivers, kung paano yung pwestuhan nila. And then spikers also, kung saan sila po pwesto for the place. And grabe, sobra hindi ko talaga nakita si Eliza. Ako <laughs> rin. As in, kahit nga nung nagbibilang, parang paano tayo naging pito? Tapos lahat tayo lumingin sa liwat Coach Roger si was Eliza. standing sa sideline, nakaganon. Tapos yung sinabing pito, nasaan? Yung pala nasa likod niya. So ta- sobrang nakakatawa talaga. Kahit si Coach Roger nagulat na nandun sa sulit si Eliza. And you know what? Even if it was like a crucial point in the game, it could have like siguro one of the reasons why nag-shift yung momentum to Lasal. Yeah. Parang walang nagsisihan sa atin nung time na yun. Wala, wala. I, I Kasi nakakatawa. <laughs> Kasi nakakatawa siya. Pero sobrang sayang. <laughs> sobrang sayang, pero sobrang nakakatawa. Actually, yung dapat nga natin, parang kaawayin nga dapat natin yung second Jeffrey, if I'm not mistaken. Kasi parang dapat kuya chinek mo, trabaho mo yun. Oh. Yeah. Wala eh, parang uh, like deep inside nakakatawa eh. Kasi it's just really how it happened na Eliza was Doon sa pinakasulok ng court, nobody would have noticed talaga. Kala ko nga line judge eh, nandun sa loob ng court eh. <laughs> okay, so that was UAAP. I think that was your last year already, season 75. You then moved to the commercial leagues and one of the... Many club teams that you joined is the fabled PLDT team with Coach Roger and a lot, a lot of legends. Like Sila Kuyesu, Ate Ruby, Ate Sasa, Chara Soriano. And that was probably the strongest team you've ever been a part of in the commercial leagues. What made that team so special though? Um, For me, that team was very special because, and yeah, First of all, si Coach Roger pa rin yung coach ko. So, hindi ganun kahirap mag-adjust dun sa sistema niya. And, syempre, kasama ko rin yung mga ibang ating teammates ko like Ella. And then, you then then, si Lacharo. Ang dami, daming mga naging, dami ko naging mga teammates noong time niyo sa PLDT. And, Jaja was also part of that team. I sa Maizo nga. And, back-to-back champion nga yung PLDT team noong time na yun. So, sobrang nakaka tuwa kasi talagang pinagtrabahuhan yung mga games noong time na yun. Kasi noong time na yun, ang rival ng PLDT was Philippine Army. Iba din talaga yung lineup ng Philippine Army na yun. And talagang peak talaga ng Philippine Army noong season na yun. Imagine um, you're up against Pina Salak, uh, Dindin, Dindin, sorry, Dindin Manabat. 
So, sobrang big names o mga nandun sa Philippine Army, Joe Benigron Saga, Rachel Dacquis. So, ganun ka grabe yung labanan ng PLDT and Army. And you didn't expect to win actually kasi diktikan yung games eh. Kumbaga, parang siguro every set, two points lang yung puntos na indifference every set. And we, uh, sobrang saya ko nung nakalaro ko yung mga veterans kasi I really learned a lot from them na binaon ko sa mga team na pinapasukan ko eventually. And yun nga, sabi ko nga kagaya kanina na dati kami yung mga bata sa team, di ba din? Ngayon yeah. kami yung mga inaate sa team. So you agree with that, Jem, na yun yung pinakamalakas na club team na nasalihan mo ever? Yes, yes. On on paper, I mean, it's a wrap. Hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> on paper. <laughs> yes, kasi ano eh, deep bench din talaga yung PLD. I mean, yung iba nga namin, parang chill-chill lang, alam yun. Hmm. So, parang hintay lang kami na, coach, yun na na, okay lang, sige, chill lang, coach. <laughs> Kahit sino ipasok mo, alam mo magde-deliver eh. Yeah, kasi yung mga naging teammates na rin naman namin, nakalaban na namin and okay talaga yung sistema ni coach nung time na yon So, hindi talaga niya like hinahayaan na malap out yung mga players. Kumbaga, mm. maging malungkot if hindi ka magamit or whatever. Yeah, malaking bagay rin na everybody on the team, like all the players, pinakakatiwalaan talaga ni Coach Roger. That's what I love about Coach Roger because He really puts a lot of trust in all, all of his players. Yeah. And alam niya na kung biglang kailangan ka, talagang gagamitin ka. Parang hindi ka niya kinukuha kung wala siya itong purpose. Yeah. Ito sa'yo. You love you, Coach Roger. <laughs> Coach. Nasaan ka? <laughs> I'm, I'm sure Coach is, um, well, Coach Roger has expressed it here and he's he's just super proud of you guys for for not just what you guys did on the court but off of it also but just just thinking about that team now that my profession it's it's like professional already and pvl it's impossible to have a team like that no <laughs> Masyado yung overkill eh. Yeah. Yung ganong, ganong klaseng team, parang parang national team na yun eh. Kung, kung ganong klaseng caliber, as in bawat player on the roster, it's crazy. But, Jem, um, how important is it na now that back then, hindi pa professional, and now you can call like volleyball your profession? Um, I'm very happy na naging professional na yung volleyball dito sa Pilipinas natin kasi this is what we've been waiting for the longest time eh. and as an athlete, you know, um, I'm very happy kasi magkakaroon also ng protection yung mga players natin kumbaga if things aren't aligned with everything as discussed based on paper and all, um, may mga matatakbuhan talaga itong mga atleta natin and I think um, yung pagiging professional dito sa, ng volleyball dito sa ating bansa, eh magiging open to more opportunities for the players to play also outside the country. Like sa basketball nga natin na karamihan ng mga players ngayon na sa ibang bansa. And sa volleyball naman, meron din naman. We have three players, Mark Espejo, Brian Bagunas, and Santiago. And hopefully, madagdagan pa. And I'll wait for then then to play <laughs> outside the country. Outside sa kalye. Sa the country! Kalye. Nakakamiss <laughs> rin maglaro ng kalye. Alam mo yan. Wait, wait. <laughs> I, I want to ask, ano, since, since we're in this topic, um, then then mentioned before na nung gines namin si Don Makandili na she feels that if there's another player in the Philippines who could be an import abroad, it would be Don. So how, how, about, how about you, Jem? Um, not, not Kalei anymore and not Eliza because they already played uh, abroad as imports. Sino pa yung nakikita mong... Hindi pa nag import sa labas ng bansa na tingin mong pwede. May may chance. Um siguro si Dindin Santiago Manabat. Ah pero si Dindin nag-import na yun. She played na. Oh yeah, she played yeah, sa, 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 sa Japan sa Torrey Ben, Torrey Arrows. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Si Sina. Si Wait lang. <laughs> Biglaan yung tanong ah. Prepared wait lang. Um <laughs> 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 napunta sa usapan eh. Maganda lang ano, isipin, 'di ba? 
Dan, do you have another one in mind? I'm trying to think. Hold on. Dan Dan Lazaro nga. Hindi nga. Huwag yeah. na tayo dyan. Jam Sige, dito na lang tayo. Dito Jam na lang actually tayo. answer the question na pala. <laughs> Pwede ako mag-Japan pero for vacation. Yeah! <laughs> Let's go! Cheer those players. Oo, oh, oh, cheer Mark, na lang tayo. Go Brian, go Jaja. <laughs> go Jaja. <laughs> So, the gem answer your question? Or kulang pa yun? Yeah. Then, then, Lazaro. <laughs> <laughs> Hindi talaga. Well, well whoever, whoever it is, you know, hopefully, di ba, it, it becomes uh, more, of, more of a trend. Kasi, ang sarap mm-hmm. sa feeling eh, di ba? Like, all of a sudden, in basketball, people are watching the B-League because of yeah. 30 and Kiefer and Kobe and Juan and all these players who are, who are out there. Jen, let's talk about the latest PBL tournament that we had. Um, Perlis's PBL journey this past year was a very bumpy ride. I mean, during the PBL tournament, your team was placed under a uh, two-week quarantine, correct? And then prior to that, um, your team had a training bubble in Baguio, and then you were... It was put on hold also due, due to health and safety protocols. How how did you and the team manage to you know stay motivated during those difficult times? Um, you know what? Then it was very challenging for us, talaga, mentally, physically, emotionally. So but Um, imagine preparing for the longest time. Na parang walang volleyball ng mahigit isang taon, and then eto na eh, nag start ka na mag bubble training. Tapos biglang hindi ka makakalaro all of a sudden. So, ang hirap, ang hirap, ng, ang hirap tanggapin. But sabi ko nga, kailangan natin lumaban and maging strong talaga. Actually, most of the members from our team got infected and no choice talaga but to stop everything. As in, nung nagtitraining kami for, nung nagtitraining kami time na sa Baguio, um, the coaches decided to cancel everything. So, nag kami for two weeks. So parang yung pakiramdam, shocks back to zero na naman. So talagang nakakasayang. And then, nung naging okay na after two weeks, parang nakapag-training kami for three days bago kami pumunta ng Ilocos. And then, pagdating ng Ilocos, training again for three days. So excited na pa- kami para sa game one. And then, nag- lumabas na yung result ng mga swab testing. So parang nung may tinamaan, may nag-positive na naman dun sa result, parang alam yun, nasa isip na ng mga players namin parang, Pwede pa uwiin na lang kami. Ganong feeling. Kasi not because uh, inisip namin na ano ba to, quarantine na naman. But parang para sa amin, hindi rin kami talaga kasi sure kung ano na ba nangyayari. Kasi medyo, alam mo yun, hindi mo na alam kung accurate pa ba yung mga results eh. So parang para sa amin naman, ayaw namin may ma-infect pang iba sa bubble. Kasi once na kumalat nga lahat yan sa bubble, I mean, may magkahawaan, parang makakancel in tournament. So, sayang din naman. Inisip din naman namin na sayang din yung pinaghirapan ng mga ibang teams, not just us. So, but all in all, we're okay naman na it happened there kasi talagang alam namin na kakayanin, kakayanin namin together. Yun na lang yung talagang nilaban ng team. And that's that's no joke. Na it's it's not just like a physical problem. It, it also affects the team mentally and that's that's the reality of the world we live in today, a world in a pandemic, na we have to be extra careful talaga eh, sa mga bagay na ganyan. But um, yun nga, what's, what's important is like the community, like the volleyball community is there for one another. And then one, one, of, the, one of the gestures na napakaganda, no? yung, yung ginawa ni Rachel Dacis and the Signal Team for, for Perlas as a show of solidarity and love for you guys na nagsuot sila ng white ribbons diba? during during the PVL so how how did that gesture affect you after everything na pinagdaanan nyo well um sobrang nakakataba ng puso when you were watching the game and saw them wearing white ribbons nga and then uh, i texted the team agad-agad na guys um white ribbon sila kasi 
para daw sa atin. So parang lahat, yung buong team, parang for me, nisip ko, forward ko sa team to para kahit pa paano, mag-boost naman yung moral nila. Kasi alam ko nga, some of the players na medyo ina-anxiety attack na nung talagang pinakwarantine na naman kami days before ng laruan namin. But ayun nga, nakatuwa kasi sinasabi nga ng signal team na hindi lang namin laban ng Perlas na dahil kailangan namin lumaban and maging strong mentally and physically. Kumbaga, laban ng lahat ng team sa loob ng bubble. Kasi once may ma-infect dyan, talagang madadami lahat. And we need to be extra conscious talaga with our actions and all. So, pagdating talaga sa bubble, as much as possible, stay lang talaga sa loob ng part of. So, medyo naging strict to ng ganun. Kahit na you wanna bond with your friends, other teams, parang ikaw na mismo yung may hihain na parang, ay, hindi muna. Text muna. Video call na lang muna. So, naging okay naman lahat and thank God safe lahat ng tao sa loob ng bubble. And you're right, no? Like, it goes to show rin na uh, very close-knit yung volleyball community, especially the players. Like, we really do care for each other kahit na we're, you know, fierce competitors on the court. Minsan like, nagka-trash talk. But outside, we're, we're really good friends. Yeah. Um, So neto nga, netong PBL, it was the first time ever na iisang league na lahat ng professional teams. And we saw, you know, great talent from all the teams despite, you know, being off of volleyball for more than a year. Ang gagaling pa rin ng mga players natin. Lahat condition. Parang hindi nagpahinga. <laughs> Oo, parang hindi nagpahinga. Totoo yan. Uh, sa lahat ng players na nakita mo, this L, may wish list ka ba ng mga players na gusto mong masetan? Uh, who are these players and why? <laughs> um, ibalik po natin si Miss Denden Lazare Villa sa pagiging middle spiker. <laughs> so sana masetan ko ulit siya. <laughs> But no, um, seriously, siguro, gusto kong ma-experience na masetan naman yung mga batang spikers. Not saying na matanda yung mga spikers ko na sa Perlas, ha? but diba, iba kasi when you set a ball sa mga batang spikers, uh, may kita mo kasi na walang takot maglaro, pumalo, parang, alam mo yun, palo kung palo, kung may blocker man sa harap nila, hindi sila natatakot. So, laban kung laban. Uh, to name a few, maybe, I think, Kat Tolentino and Pongay, Gaston. Kasi, I can see na they're really enjoying the game inside the court, eh. And, kahit na, na kahit na alam mo crucial yung game naka pressure na and everything parang sila focus pa rin and happy happy pa rin and kung may kung nabo-block man sila ng paulit-ulit alam mo yon iba yung consistency ng power nila eh talagang palo kung palo and kahit na habang tumatagal yung sets yung rallies parang hindi sila napapagod bakit ganon <laughs> Bakit gano'n? Iba na yung mga bata ngayon. Kaya nga. <laughs> alam, alam, alam nyo, personally, I thought Pongay was one of the most improved players in oh, yeah. in the PVL mm-hmm. bubble. Yes, she para Para sa akin, ha? For, for, what about for the two of you? Sino pa yung mga iba na... Grabe yung in-improve nito, ha? Nung, nung nakita niya maglaro sa PVL bubble. Mm. Hirap. <laughs> Ako si Shaya. Ako si oh, Shaya. 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 Shaya Dorador. Yeah, yeah. I remember. Definitely. I remember oh. like when we were thinking who was gonna start, who was gonna start for for Cherry Tigo. Tapos tinitignan namin ni Sir Joy Villar yung, yung lineup. Sabi ko, baka si Adorador, ano? <laughs> so, yun nga. Nag-start nga si, si Shaya Adorador. Yeah, that's that's a good observation then na, na si Shaya nga. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I think um Tots Carlos. Yes, malakas Ay, na siya oh. before before pa, oh. pero mas, mas nakita ko pa. na mas naging consistent yung laro niya and hindi na siya yung palo lang ng palo, bira lang ng bira. Ngayon parang nakita mo na ginagamitan na rin talaga niya ng utak lahat-lahat. So I think sobrang laki rin yeah. ng improve ni Tots. Agree, agree. Kasi okay. noong una, di ba, at the start of the tournament, si Michelle, yung, she was really playing well. And then during the latter part of the tournament, because of Tots's, ano yung umangat yung laro niya, biglang si Tots na yung naglalaro for majority of the matches. 
So yeah, th- yeah, si si Tots nga, I agree. Okay, Jam, you mentioned a lot of young players. Ngayon napapanood natin yung mga bata na naglalaro sa sa AVC sa Thailand and um wow, uh, a, a lot of impressive players. Uh, sina Laksina, sina Belen, Pal, Nerva. Like, uh, wh- what are your thoughts on this that, you know, these young players are getting the opportunity to play with veterans, play internationally, and get the exposure at such a young age? Um, I'm really happy to see them play, exceptionally. And talagang sobrang laki nung exposure na to para sa mga batang players natin in the national team. And yun nga yung sabi ko, di ba? Kung bata ka, parang, yes, matatakot ka ng konti, but pagdating sa paluan, parang, lalo kang magiging matapang, eh, kasi parang sobrang laking opportunity na nakapaglaro ka again sa uh, mga malalaking pangalan sa mga ibang bansa ng mga players uh, they played against uh, Plumjit. Yan, sila, Lutsara. So, sobrang laking bagay noon para sa mga bata natin. And also, I want to give credits to the seniors ng national team also kasi they're guiding these kids talaga and role model talaga sila para sa mga bata. And for the development naman of the next generation of our national team players, I think if the federation wants to have all this, tong- this tall and young players, uh, they must retain them and give them a good program talaga. I think that's what we're missing right now. And for me kasi... Um, in my own opinion, it's really hard na papalit-palit yung lineup natin sa national team. Kung baga, nag-iiba-iba tayo ng players kung may tournament na ganito. And then, pagka panibagong tournament, iba na naman yung lineup natin. But I think okay lang naman magpalit-palit as long as we have that core players para dagdag ka na lang ng dagdag kung sino man yung tingin mo makatulong. And also, for me, one factor yung commitment nitong mga players natin sa national team kasi as we all know naman some of the players they have other commitments also with their respective club teams nga. And I think it's very important na maging synchronized yung calendar natin dito sa Pilipinas at sa ibang bansa para maka- makakasali talaga yung national teams natin sa mga liga sa ibang bansa for exposure na rin and to be able to prepare for the sea games and other events for the new Philippines. I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. Amen, Jem. Amen. <laughs> oh, national <laughs> team. Okay, who who impressed you guys the most? I know then you made a tweet about Michaela Belen talking about her skills. What 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 made you like when you were watching her? Like what made you what like what what impressed you the most? Like aside from all of those skills that you you tweeted about i think it's her cons- one consistency niya and kitang kita yung maturity niya on the court i mean she she's very vocal parang pag pinapakita yung side nila before they receive like you can see her talking to the other players and even if there were veterans on the court makita mo na she's comfortable playing with them like walang walang kaba walang doubt so that's Aside from your skills, do na ako na impress sa kanya. Yeah. How about, about you, Miss Gem? Yeah. <laughs> Agree with Ben then, because I saw Belen nga nung past few games. Tapos para for me, nakita ko na yung bata matapang eh, and walang takot and talagang open din siya sa mga sinasabi sa kanya ng mga seniors niya. So kung napagsabihan siya, magde-deliver na lang siya. Diba? Iba yung maturity ng bata pagdating sa court. And we all know naman na incoming first year college pa lang siya. So, sobra excited ako for her na makita siya maglaro. Oh, I just, I just, I just remembered, ha. So, we had Jennifer Nerva on the show. And then, mm-hmm. I was asking about yung mga young NU players and Belen was one of them. So, I asked Jen, sabi ko, who who is who do you, who does Belen remind you of? Like who who would you compare her to in in among the older players? Tapos sabi niya si Eliza Valdez daw. Like she sees Eliza Valdez in in Micaela Belen. So being that you became teammates with Eliza, what do you think of this this comparison by Nerva to to liken Belen to Eliza? Um. Belen and Eliza, I think 
kasi same naman sila ng position. Siguro, nandun yung ano eh, may kita mo sa kanilang dalawa na, nandun yung tapang pagdating sa loob ng court mm. na wala silang takot na pumalo kahit na nabablock sila. Imagine si Belen, she's not that tall naman na sa open spiker. Pero talagang lumalaban, pumapalo, may power and all. So, may kita mong malaki pa talaga yung potential ng batang to. Especially, bata pa nga and marami pang matututunan. Same with Eliza na kahit ilang beses siya nabablock, talagang kung crunch time, talagang nandun siya para, you know, kung kailangan mo ng puntos, give it to Eliza. Dan, you want to chime? I would like, I, yeah, I would liken her to Ate Cha Cruz more, more than Eliza for me. Because Eliza is like scoring machine. Yun talaga. Eliza is scoring machine. And then, Belen is more like Ate Cha in a way na maasahan mo in passing. And then when you give her, even if you don't give her the ball most of the time, you know she will deliver. So it's more of Ate Cha for me than Eliza. Although makikita mo rin naman yung likeness niya with Eliza in terms of yun nga, walang takot, she's so sure of herself na when it's time to take charge, she will step up. Ganun. Okay, another comparison. See, we also had Iris Tolenada here on the show and then I asked her what she thought about Camille Cal. Uh, mm-hmm. Sabi niya, she, she would compare Camille Cal. Na, she sees a little Kim Fajardo daw. In in Camille yeah. Cal, Jem, I know Setter. You you agree with that? Does does yes, Kim yes. Cal have a, have some Kim Fajardo in her? Mejo hawig, mejo hawig. And in terms of playing, naman, yeah, parang Kim Fajardo. And I think para mi pang i improve si Camille Cal kung tito sa setting. Hopefully, talagang maggrow siya as a player under. Her coaches right now. Marami rin mga batang setter ngayon eh, like who like you aren't like the tallest among the contemporaries, but um, are really great playmakers. So like Michelle Cobb is, is an example. So what can you say about the younger generation of of setters now, Jem? How do you see the the setter position? How how did it evolve? now with with the yung mga mas batang setters na ngayon. Um ngayon kasi no Anton, parang bibihira ka na talaga makakita ng setter na may height to be honest. Like iilan na lang din yung mga matatangkad na setters and sobrang swerte mo kung ma- ng coaches kung makakuha ka ng setter na magaling and then may height pa. But I think with but I think with Camille Cal and Michelle Cobb um yeah, we're not that tall naman but dinabawi na lang sa skills and sa volleyball IQ. Kasi it's a tough job talaga being a setter, no? Kasi parang ang dami mo kailangan isipin. Kailangan mo isipin kung ano ipapato mo sa mga spikers mo. And then kailangan mo masunod kung ano sistema na gusto ng coaches mo. And for me, it's about trusting your spikers. Yung pagkakaroon ng magandang timing and tempo and everything inside the court para you can be able to create good plays. Di ba nga sabi, small but terrible. Pero... Remember, uh, yung maliit, nakakapuwing pa rin. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Yan yung mga quotable quotes na nabangan namin eh. <laughs> Joke lang. <laughs> Highlight reel na yan. <laughs> Galing kay Coach Roger yon. <laughs> si Coach Roger talaga maraming quotable quotes. Laging may bangan yan. <laughs> Yung mga coaches natin, ayan, si Coach Kung Fu, si Coach Roger, Coach Oliver. Okay, uh, Jem, despite being one of the smallest players on the court, you've shown that you can, you know, compete just as well as uh, the taller players. What message can you give them to your fans and, you know, aspiring volleyball players who are, you know, hesitant to play because of their height? Um, for me, siguro, embrace being small and just prove that you can play ball. Kasi we can change that naman yung pagiging maliit na player. But for the aspiring players nga, uh, 
don't be hesitant to play sports. Siguro, um, double the effort na lang. And talagang kailangan mong i-push pa yung sarili mo. And for me, yes, I'm small. But I think if you can play talaga, uh, it's a matter of, you know, adjusting and then timing sa lahat ng bagay. Kasi me as a small setter, hindi lang ako nag adjust pagdating sa blockings ko, but also sa setting. Kasi nagi- nagiging iba rin yung height ng mga sets for me. Kasi nga, syempre, maliit ako and then iba yung mga spiders ko. So, yung pagiging small um, na tao mo, I mean, pag kung hindi ka gifted sa height, siguro, kailangan mong i-push na lang and bumawi sa ibang mga skills like sa defense mo, sa setting mo, and, and all. And siguro, it's a matter of working hard talaga and trusting the process, trusting your coaches na talagang matutulungan ka na mag-i-improve sa lahat ng bagay. Then I would Take say... Take it from one of the best. Take it from one of the best in, in the game. We, we got a lot of gems in this catch-up of ours from Gem Fair. Grabe. <laughs> wow. Sabi to. We, we, we got a lot of gems from this, from this interview. Gem, uh, na-curious lang ako. Uh, may nakita akong picture dyan sa likod mo. Uh, yeah. Is Wait, that is that Ben? An an yan? What's that picture? No. Yeah, yeah it's Ben. It's me. Yung may nakita ko naka blue eh. Oh, oh si Z. Si Z. Oh, oh, si Z. And it's Ben. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Throwback. Oh my gosh, high socks. So out of <laughs> out of all the pics, Jem, bakit yan naman yung inattach mo? What what what's what's uh what's so special about that pic? That that pick that you pulled out. Ito. Mm. Um, kasi then remember this picture. Meron pa tayo yung nakaupo. Na tatlo yung tatlo tayo ni Z. That was the best one for Wait, me. Wait, what, what happened ba? What happened sa play na yan? This one. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, give it to me lang. Uh, okay. <laughs> But yeah, karamihan ng pictures ko here yung during Ateneo days. Yeah, yeah, the fans are so sweet. They give us, you know, little trinkets and gifts, mga pictures na ganyan. Yeah. Show of appreciation and love. Aww. Jen Ferrer, you guys. Madam, thank you so much for your time and your knowledge mo. I love that you shared so much from, you know, your high school days, or your Ateneo days, and your thoughts on the new, you know, pool of players in our national team. I'm sure na when they see this, matutuwa sila to hear, you know, praise from you. Uh, thank you rin na binigyan mo kami ng time out of your very busy training sa pag-ML mo para maging national player ka na sa E-Games. <laughs> That's not the yeah, next step. Luck to your Thank journey. You. Yeah, that's not <laughs> really the so ne- much. that's not really the next step in Jem's journey, ah. So abangan na lang natin. Magi <laughs> e-sport pala. Thank you guys so much for <laughs> Miss Jen, thank you, thank you so much. We are honored to have you on the show and to everyone who's watching. See you guys in our next episode. Thank you for watching Volleyball DNA. Make sure you hit the subscribe button to get notified for future episodes and interview highlights. And while you're at it, head over to our Facebook page by clicking on the link in the description.